Conventional model of teaching is one in which an instructor shows up in class, delivers lectures, uh, gives a bunch of assignments and exams, and finally assigns a grade to each student in the class. The key element of this framework is the grade. Students obsess over it and will often try and negotiate quite hard to get it bumped up. Uh, this fixation on grades is actually quite detrimental to real learning. We assume that giving grades helps us to provide some feedback to the students or measure learning in some way. But there is much research now which suggests that such a measurement whittled down to a single number or a letter, which is what a grade is, does nothing to actually help students improve their knowledge and skills. So in my neuroscience class, we did away with the focus on grades. I was actually inspired by a Twitter, Twitter thread uh, by Yael Nev, a professor at Princeton University who had tried something similar in her class earlier. A few emails back and forth with her uh, convinced me that this is something that I should try out. Uh, of course, this was a drastic step and I had to be very careful. And so there were a lot of discussions with colleagues here. Um, also, there were uh, but there was back and forth with some students in my lab and some other students uh, before I finally convinced myself that I should take the plunge. So what did we do? Uh, like I said, we de-emphasized the grades entirely and rather focused on skills that students would need to do well in the course uh, and also during their time at the Institute and beyond it. Uh, students learning and their growth as scholars is, is more consequential in the long run anyway. Uh, my course then became a vehicle for students to identify and work on areas and skills that would be useful for them in the long run. For example, setting goals, synthesizing and presenting dense information, uh, working in a team, writing and, and so on and so forth. The role of the instructor and the teaching assistants then was to discuss the challenges that students were facing as they went about achieving, trying to achieve their goals, uh, to help them monitor their progress, uh, provide feedback, lots of feedback, to help them achieve whatever they set out to achieve. The course itself had five components, conceptual understanding, reading prompts, group presentations, a term paper, and a group project. Students set their own weekly goals for each of these components using the SMART framework. That is, uh, these goals had to be specific, they had to be measurable, they had to be attainable, they had to be relevant, and they had to be timed. And my only advice to them was that they make sure that their goals were not trivial, that setting these goals would actually push them out of their comfort zones and help them bring about changes that were meaningful. And students responded very positively. For example, one of the students who would usually procrastinate on reading assignments set a goal to complete the reading prompts three days before the deadline. Another student who usually had a hard time working in a group wished to improve on that aspect. Uh, a third student <clears throat> wanted to make sure that she practiced her presentations at least once before she finally delivered it. So she set that as her goal. There was complete flexibility and freedom for students to figure out the area in which they were lacking and then work towards improving it. Students were also, very importantly, required to document their progress on the goals on a weekly basis. Uh, over the semester, we did not grade the individual components, but since institutional requirements mandated assigning a final grade to each student, I had to do it. So I met with the students at the end of the semester and had them suggest their own grade uh, and importantly provide data and evidence to back it up. This grade of course had to be based on their progress on each of the components and their own assessment of how well they had done on each. 
and remarkably in all but one cases uh, there was a perfect match between the student's own assessment of how well they had done and my own internal assessment based on monitoring their progress and interacting with them over the course of the semester. Uh, in the end, you know, I think we need to realize that teachers and educators don't have it easy. Uh, while we want to emphasize and ensure that each student learns and builds a skill set through coursework and research, uh, we are also expected to evaluate and assign grades to these students. And some uh, people have likened this to a situation where coaches who train athletes also then later have to judge them in a sporting event. And what may actually work better for an athlete is for coaches to look at film from the training sessions or from the matches to study their performance and provide help along multiple dimensions to address potential weaknesses. Unidimensional feedback or a grade is not going to help a trainee improve. And so I don't think I'm going back to the old conventional way of grading ever again.